lash down the uh, cross beams on the hull. So these will be some uh, cross beam sockets, cross beam pads. What else they have? What else they call them? I wrote them all down. I just don't remember them. Right there on that paper. Yeah. We're going to make some cleats. Under beam, under beam blocks, six deck pads, six beam sockets, some cleats, bolts and screws, whatever. Anyhow, uh, this is Sapili Mahogany. And we ran it through the planer several times. I'm sure you don't want to watch that more than what we're showing right here. So that board is pretty heavy it's uh straining the motor on that planer in order to get it through we could only do uh a quarter of a turn on it which is like a 64th of an inch at a time i believe but it's heavy it's hard uh it's got some good looking grain on it naturally but anyhow that's as thin as it's going to go. Now we'll work on cutting it up to the individual blocks and everything. I want you to notice something. This is true of lumber wherever you get it nowadays. We measured this, this board here is pretty straight. It's on top. This board here, probably when they cut it first was straight, but as it cured, it took on a little curve to itself. Anyhow, the grain, you can tell by the grain there, it kind of pulls it out one way or the other. Anyhow, we're gonna straighten the board out. Here, we've set the little scale at one and five eighths. And you say, why do you set that at one and five eighths as an arbitrary number? Well, right here, if you look, on the back of your saw, you probably can't make it out, but it says one and a half inches here from here over, and it says five inches from here going this way. I assume I'm, can they see that? Yeah, okay, good. Anyhow, we're going to put the saw here, which is gonna cut off one and a half inches so i want to get rid of the rough sawn edge here on the end now we do have the blade going down just below the sapili sapale whatever you want to call it we got the board sitting on the two before we've got the straight edge on top that's going to guide this side of the saw right here down so that it'll take off this extra here in the center i don't even make it out from there or not but we've got another seven eighths of an inch, at least. So, anyhow, that's what we're planning on doing. So, I'll turn the camera back on after we're done making noise and sawdust. That's a lot better not listening to the saw and the vacuum. You can see, I believe, that this board was not straight this is straight now in relation i don't i don't have a uh oh, what do they call it? a jointer so i can't swear that that's absolutely square probably not but it's pretty close anyhow there is another way to do this if i had another board that's slightly longer than 12 foot like this one is on top I could have moved it over the same distance and screwed it to the board here and then ran it through the table saw to take off that seven eighths of an inch out here plus a little extra. You can do it that way on your table saw, but I didn't have a board wider that's longer than 12 foot. That's the only reason I didn't do it. Because this takes longer actually to set up the clamps. Now I'm gonna show you how to clean house. 
Okay, and this is how you clean house. It works great in the house too. You just gotta be careful about the pictures on the wall. It blows them off. Okay, one other thing too, is, you see, I use the one and a half inch side of the saw. Well, you say, well, you got a nice five inch wide blade here, or a base, that would give you a lot steadier thing to push the saw down. Now, that's true. If I'd have screwed this into the board, I could have done that, but with using clamps what happens is is you run into the motor so that uh, when you're running it down there and even taking the, the motor all the way up it's going to be too thin uh, it's not going to cut through the wood but uh, that's the reason we did we use the little one and a half inch base instead of the five inch base if you can come up a way without using clamps more power to you it's easy. <laughs> Just screw it down. And as you can see, when one side of a board isn't straight, the other side isn't either. So, and it's funny, it's just the opposite. The thin part was in the middle, just where the other one with the neck part was. Okay. Although, I mean, the, the sockets are the only ones that have to have glue. The others are just straight. Okay, but one more time. We're cutting the blanks for the beam sockets, the deck pads, and the cleats. Straight like that, I gotta change the camera. <laughs> okay, hit it. We're cutting the blanks for the beam sockets, the deck pads, and the cleats. the cabin front and fore and aft and then these are the beam sockets that go uh, on the forward deck so there's two there and actually we're going to cut five inches out of the center of this at a slight angle these are the six blanks that we cut earlier for the cleats the cleats sit on top of the Akas at the outer edges and they keep the lashings from slipping off the ends of the Akka. This is the tool we use to mark the ends of the cleat blank so that Rex had a, has a pattern to go by to sand them down. Round them off. the 
11 other corners. Then we'll be rounding them off on the edge here too. Okay, this is our flat surface that we're going to be working on. We wanted to set it up in the garage with the beams across it, just see what it would look like. And we actually, we figured it's going to be in there for a few days. So, uh, we also angled them sideways just to make sure they'd fit in there with the garage door. And closed. what we've done is we have nine foot in between uh the hulls here and we've done this front and back so that uh makes it possible to square it up we marked on the floor where the uh, cart here is sitting and uh, I know we'll never get this close of accuracy when we're setting up on the beach, but we don't need to. The main thing is, is we're doing it so we can uh, fit all the pads, braces. What else? What's the other name? <laughs> Blocks. Blocks, whatever. In any case, anyhow, it's perfect. Excuse me for it. <laughs> Okay, what we're doing here is trying to square up the hull so that we can uh, fit the, the pads and the braces and all that stuff. Quarter. Doing on the other end of the boat. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. We're after we got the boat all squared up for where the beams are, we're starting through here one beam at a time and we're putting our our blocks below them. This one here you can see has is angled up. I assume you can see that is angled up that direction and uh, so it's we're still going to take a little bit off of it I believe just uh, because it's awful high on the far ends and uh, the more we measure the more we change our mind so it's one of these projects that uh, takes a bit of time it's slow but not a worry. You got nothing but time. Might as well do it right. 